everybody. I'm on my way down to Waterloo, Ontario for our open house. I've got a big old box behind me. being parked not permanently but for a few weeks while we await the arrival of our baby boy so the last trip before baby is a van trailer which is kind of nice right nice little gravy way to wrap things up low stress just hook on and go this trailer is going to our terminal there and then I'm picking up a different trailer that's taking me back to Manitoba once the open house is done. So I got two days of driving ahead of me. Yesterday I didn't film anything. I'm already in Dryden, Ontario, which is four hours down the road. I have about another 20 or so hours of driving eastbound to the Toronto area. All right. All right, all right, all right. Oh no, what's going on here? Why are you loose? There you go. Lights on for safety, yes. So people can see me in case it gets cloudy or something. We're gonna take Highway 17. I'm in Dryden, Ontario, like I told you. I'm gonna risk it. There's some light snow in Sault Ste. Marie, but there's no snow in Capus Casing, but it's 30 miles further to go through Capus Casing than to go through Sault Ste. Marie on 17. So the 11 is a little bit longer, it's flatter. I have a light load behind me inside this van trailer. I think we're gonna take 17 through and try to save the time. We'll see how it goes. Let's hope I don't regret my decision. Highway 17, why is this not? Oh, this thing's not sticking anymore. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, that's no good. You see that? You better keep sticking. Okay. Okay, don't make me gorilla glue you. What happened there? I don't really like this mount that much, but it's a charger mount, right? So it charges my phone. But I have to have it sideways like this, otherwise it pops up too far. So I'm sideways like this, charging my phone. You better stay put. You hear me? You hear me, boy? You hear me? You better stay. Okay. Off we go. We're ready. Everything's ready. Truck's ready. I'm ready. This guy's not ready. He's in my way. Put the clutch in, put it in gear. Let's get out of here. Make sure the trailer's attached. It sure looked like it was when I checked it. Yep, that's attached. Trailer brakes also work just fine. And they release. That's a good day. Let's get out of here. Dryden, Ontario, it was very nice spending the night here. I want to make it to Sault Ste. Marie tonight and sleep there. Hopefully at the Flying J, then I can have a shower. I mean, I can shower at the Petro Pass too. I just, I don't like their showers as much. They're not as clean. Some locations are. Beautiful day for a drive. As I was saying earlier, I got this box behind me, so it's like a low stress gravy load. Don't gotta worry about nothing falling off or anything. 
Got to make sure the doors stay closed. What's this town? What's this street name called? Bozo Avenue? Bozo Avenue. B O O Z H O O. Bozo Avenue. <laughs> Why have I never seen that before? 12 years of driving through here, I've never seen that. Maybe because I'm a bozo. I've never noticed that. Well, it's gonna be messy going through here. Everything's melting. But oh, there's the uh, what used to be a blue beacon. It's now a Northern Touch truck wash. Same owners, just different name here in Canada. Blue Beacon rebranded in Canada to Northern Touch. There's a truck wash in Milton, Ontario. We're gonna stop there. It's about like, you know, 30 miles or so, 20, 30 miles away from where I need to be. And it's supposed to be a sunny day Tuesday or a nice day, nice evening, nice night. So whenever I get there, I'm gonna go wash the truck and then we're gonna go to our terminal in Waterloo, sleep there and get ready for the open house. I don't know what to expect. I'm hoping some of you can make it out. I understand it's in the middle of the day on a weekday. I get it. But uh, if you have the time, it's so cool to meet you. So after this trip, Old Blue's going into the shop, my shop, and parking till May. Baby is due. Well, baby is coming through C-section March 24th. And then uh, I've got to be there to help Britt because she can't lift anything for eight weeks, right? It's gonna be good. This is the last trip. One more week, this is the last one. Next time we head out, I'm gonna officially be a dad. Hi, 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 hi. Okay. Okay, I'll let that go. That was all right. That was all right. Not happy about it though. How about you? You gonna do the same thing? You can do it too? No, you're not, because that side's busy. You would have done it though, wouldn't you? Driving a truck isn't the hard part. It's watching out for all the other people. That's the hard part. People are crazy, man. Hey, do they still have truck parking at Walmart here? I don't see any trucks here. Usually there's trucks. No trucks beyond that point. They closed the truck parking at Walmart. Really? And this guy's getting a spanking. What's going on? They closed the truck parking at Walmart. That's where we always stop to get our groceries. They're just like, they don't like their customers or what? I know there's not a lot of room in there for trucks, but there was. There was nice special parking for us and everything. We go get our groceries, spend some money. I guess they don't want our money. All right, well, if that's how they feel. They won't get my money. I'll keep my money, give it to someone else. I mean, I can't make them want my money, right? You can't force people to take your money. If they don't want it, they don't want it. If I can't park there, I can't give them my money. Oh well, that was an old school Walmart that needed a refurbish and a renovation badly anyway. Let's go to the next one. I don't like being in places where I'm not wanted, you know? It makes me feel weird when I know I'm not wanted somewhere. Why don't you want me, Walmart? What do I ever do to you?
numbers are in. We're pulling a van trailer behind us, so it's like a big billboard, big parachute behind me. I thought I'd be doing worse fuel economy. I'm actually doing the best fuel economy I've done in over a week. Last week, what did we do? We were averaging about 5.5 miles per US gallon last week. And I was pulling flatbed, mostly lumber. Pretty sleek loads though, right? Nothing that would grab the wind at all. Those headers were pretty like, grabby. But uh, other than 5.5, yeah. Pulling those headers, uh, I got 5.68 miles per gallon. Now pulling this van trailer, I mean, given it is a pretty light load, but uh, I am still pulling the big trailers way up higher than my cab, right? So it usually just grabs all the wind. That's 6.51 miles per gallon. From there to here so far price was a dollar 86 per liter canadian and it cost me 609 dollars and 77 cents canadian and that got me 907 kilometers down the road so that is 36.16 so 36.16 liters every 100 kilometers and we're burning hmm so if we do some math here, we go 36.16 like divided by 100, because that's how many I'm burning. I'm burning 0.3616 of a liter every kilometer. Times that by the fuel price. I'm burning 67 cents a kilometer. Times that by 1.61. I'm burning $1.08 Canadian per mile. And that's pretty good. The new trucks, like the, the fancy, sleek, slippery trucks with the nice, you know, short hood, uh, they do much better than me. Uh, I have to pay the hood tax because I have a big, long hood out in front of me. But uh, that was my choice. I regret nothing. I love this W900. It's a little more expensive to run them, but uh, it's worth it to me to drive a truck that I really love, that I've always wanted. Ugh. But anyways, yeah, 6.5 miles per gallon. Not too bad. I've been running at, uh, well, the speed limit going through Ontario here is 90 kilometers an hour or like 55 miles an hour, somewhere in there, 55 to 60 miles an hour. Running with traffic and uh, been doing pretty good. I guess because it is it is a lot of hills. We're getting into a much hillier section now. Uh, once we keep going east from here, I have that decision to make. Highway 11 is going to go up north. That's a flat highway. Highway 17 is going to hug the lake and stay south. It's 50 kilometers or 30 miles shorter to stick by the lake. But there's more hills. Since I have a pretty light load, I'm going to take the 17 today and see what happens. Usually I would take the 11, but usually I'm a lot heavier too. We'll see what happens. Okay, there's nobody else here. I'm the only one. Apparently no one needs fuel right now. More for me. I'm going to go around park and go inside and grab a coffee and then we'll be on the road we're gonna take highway 17 let's get ready for some hills
St. Marie. We made it. This day just seemed to fly by. We've driven 1,037 kilometers today. 630 miles or so. I'm going to pull into the Flying J and see if there's room for us to park. If not, I'll go across the street to Petro Pass. One of those two truck stops, we're going to find a parking spot. We can't find one at either of those. There is also a Husky or an Esso. I think Esso bought Husky on the other side of town. We can always go check that out too. But first we'll check the Flying J. I have a shower credit that I can use here. It's just up here on the left. Looks like fuel is even more expensive here than it was in Thunder Bay. It's $1.96 per liter, 10 cents more per liter. parking spots available. Let's see if I feel comfortable parking in them. I don't want to park anywhere where I might get my hood ripped off in the morning. Another good day done. 1,037 kilometers is what we drove today. Let's see, miles, 1,037 kilometers, 644 miles. That's a good day, a good full day. All right, so I'm gonna jump out of the truck now, do my post trip, just walk around, bang the tires a bit. Make sure everything is as it should be. Then we'll head inside, probably go for a shower and then go to bed. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. I know it was kind of like a short little scoot through Northern Ontario. It went really fast for me too. I don't know how much footage I got today. I mean, it feels like we just left. Now we're in Sault Ste. Marie already. But we did make it to our destination where we wanted to get to. So we did reach our goal for today. So that's good. Tomorrow our goal is Waterloo, Ontario. After a truck wash. So we're gonna wake up in the morning. We have another 769 kilometers to go. So not as long as a, of a day tomorrow. I did most of it today. Uh, one second here, 1.61. 478 miles tomorrow. And as we pass by Milton, we gotta go sort of through Toronto. And we passed by Milton, which is on the east side of Toronto. Uh, hopefully that Northern Touch truck wash is still operational there. It says on Google that it's open 24 hours a day. We're gonna pull in there 
get the uh, top of the line wash for Old Blue so it's ready for the open house. If anybody does come out that they can see a clean truck, I want to make sure that uh, <laughs> I'm not presenting a dirty truck for you guys who come out. Like I say, image matters. And it's not always possible to keep things perfectly clean. Like my truck's dirty right now. It's not always possible to keep things clean. Like look at this window. Let me pull you off here. Right, like, look at this. The truck is dirty right now. I in no way expect everyone to be able to keep everything clean 100% of the time, especially in the winter time. But you know, we do gotta make an effort. So tomorrow there'll be a truck wash do the open house the day after tomorrow, and then two days driving back, two long days to get back home, and then we'll wash the truck again, park it in the shop, and hang up the keys. Just for a little while though, we'll be back in May, don't worry. But uh, I'm parking until May 1st. We got uh, about two weeks before the C-section, just in case if baby decides to come early, I'll be at home. I also need those two weeks to get a few things in order. For one, I need to get our taxes done, income taxes, gotta get that done. And all the paperwork get it handed in uh, to my accountant, which is also my mother. <laughs> and uh, get all that finished, get the shop organized, get the house ready and organized, finish up the last little finishing touches on the nursery, hanging up artwork and stuff. And then probably do some research. Uh, you know, my wife, Britt, is very, very prepared for this. She's been preparing for this her whole life. And uh, I'd like to say I'm prepared too. But I'm still going to be spending a lot of the time before baby comes. When I'm off the road. Researching and preparing myself. You know, what to expect. How to do this how to do that i'm also taking a few first aid courses in that time uh infant first aid infant cpr so that if uh baby starts choking or anything like that i know the proper techniques and ways to uh save save his life uh there's a couple of courses like that i'll be going through so there's there is some stuff that i have planned for this time off other than just waiting around uh, for our son to show up <laughs> There's lots to do My last trip I got tomorrow Four or five more days on the road Coming up quickly I'm so tired right now. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate that Smash that like button hit the subscribe button and the bell to notify you when my next video is released and I'll see you tomorrow Take care